What is standard template library in C++? What are the several components and what is the use of using standard template library in C++? Hello everyone, I'm Sukanya from Goedu Hub Technologies and in this video we are going to discuss about standard template library. The standard template library or STL is one of the most important features added to C++ in recent years. STLs provide general purpose templatized classes and functions that implement algorithms and data structures too. Although the syntax of STL can be intimidating, it is actually quite easy to use once an understanding of how it is constructed is known. There are several components of STL which are core containers, algorithms, iterators. These three components work in conjunction together with one another to provide support in variety of programming solutions. The relation between three components is shown here as you can see that if there are three objects then there will be three iterators and each object is specified with some particular algorithm. Now what are containers firstly? A container is an object that actually stores some data is called a container. It is a way data organized in the memory that in memory in several containers the data is stored. The STL containers are implemented by template classes and therefore they can be easily customized to hold different types of data. Containers are objects that hold the other objects. So container is not something you can see as a particular stack or anything. It is also an object which is holding the other objects of any program. Container can be sequence containers such as vector class, dq and list. A sequence is a linear list. Associative containers allow efficient retrieval of value based on keys. Now a map is used for all these value based keys so that unique access can be made with the help of unique keys. Now container classes include vector, list, dq, set, multiset, map, multimap, hash, hash multiset, hash map and all such classes are included in container class. They may also include other containers that are implementation dependent and extension. Now container has following defined class, it is being descriptor in this table that if the container is bit set then it is having a set of bit and the required header is bit set. Similarly for dq also, a double ended queue is the description for storing the objects we use this particular container dq and the required header is dq. List as I have already told is particularly a linear list. Similarly map stores the key value pair so that mapping could be associated with a particular key which has only one value. Multimap in which one key may be associated with more than one value then that particular container is multimap. Similarly there is multiset, a set in which each element is not necessarily to be unique is known as a multiset and the required header is set. Similarly there is priority queue, a priority queue is also having the required header as key and same for the queue also. Set, a set in which each element is unique is known as a set. Similarly, there is for stack and for vector, that is any dynamic array is a vector. Next is algorithm. Now an algorithm is a procedure that is used to process data contained in the containers. In the STL includes many different kinds of algorithm to provide support to tasks such as initializing, searching, copying, sorting and margin. All these processes or tasks in a particular set of data can be done with the help of algorithms. So algorithms are implemented by template functions. Algorithms are used to process the elements of collection. For example, algorithms can search, sort and modify the collection of elements which is being given. So for that algorithms are used. The data and operation in STL are decoupled. That is container classes manage the data and the operations are defined by algorithm. That means data is actually managed by the container classes and the operations which is needed to be done on those particular data set are actually done by the algorithms. Algorithms operate on a range of elements within the container. That is for sure as much elements are there in the, in the container only on those the algorithms will operate. Next what we have seen in the uh, particular flowchart is iterator. So iterator is an object, it is like a pointer that points an element in any particular container. If we can use iterator to move through the containers, that is contains of the containers, iterators are handled just like pointers. We can increment and decrement them also. Iterators connect the algorithms with containers and play a key role in the manipulation of data stored in those containers. 
Iterator is a pointer used to manipulate the elements of the collection of objects. These collections may be container or any subset of container. Now, iterator is actually a smart pointer. For example, to implement an iterator, you call the plus plus operator. To assess the value of any operator, you may use the asterisk operator. So, that's why it is quite similar to the pointers. And iterators are random access to store and retrieve values, bidirectional also for forward and backward moving. Forward iterator to store and retrieve values by forward moving only. And similarly for input, it retrieves but do not store any value. Output, it also stores but it does not retrieve. Exact opposite of the input. Conceptually, iterators are linker between two components. That is, it links the two components. We can say that the container set of data and the algorithm operation. They can be linked with the help of iterator as it points. It is similar to the pointer. So that is how iterator works. Theoretically, also you can combine every kind of container with every kind of algorithm with the help of a particular iterator. So that there could be a link, there could be a point, a pointed function could be there that which operator or the which algorithm is working on which set of data. For that we use operator. So this is basically the STL and how it has improved the functionality of object oriented programming. And for more concepts of object oriented programming, we will look into upcoming videos. Thank you.